St. Petersburg's Day of Logic and Computability. And uh, we have the pleasure of the first speaker from the uh, Stekloff Institute Moscow, uh, Tanya Shankanov on algebraic and neighborhood semantics of the modal logic of transitive closure. So please. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, it's my pleasure to participate in this conference in honor of Vladimir Pavlovich. So thank you for the invitation. Uh, and today uh, you see the title of my talk. And first, uh, first let me briefly recall you the pure model logic of transitive closure. Uh, this system called K plus is a logic in a language with two model connectives, box and box plus. Here we see a list of axioms of inference rules, Boolean tautologies, axioms, uh, which tell, tell us that both connectives are normal. And final two axioms, with meaning I will explain in terms of semantics of this logic on the next slide. Finally, we see uh, standard inference rules, modus ponens, the necessitation rule, uh, and the other necessitation rule for the second, for the first model connective is derivable, so I omit this rule here. Uh, so let us discuss why this logic is called the model logic of transitive closure. If we consider its cryptic semantics, that then it turns out that this logic precisely captures uh, a correspondence between uh, a binary relation in the cryptic frame and its transitive closure. That is, if we consider a bimodal cryptic frame uh, WRS, that is a set with two binary relations. The first binary relation helps us to interpret the first model connective box. And the second binary relation helps us do the same for the connective box plus. Then this logic K plus is valid in such a frame. If and don't leave the second relation equals uh, to the equals the transitive closure of the first one. That is, this logic precisely captures this correspondence between a binary relation R and its transitive closure, R plus, uh, or in this case, S. Uh, in addition, this logic is complete with respect to its cryptic semantics. However, uh, it's not valid in its canonical cryptic frame. Uh, and let me recall a canonical cryptic frame. It is a structure uh, constructed from maximal consistent sets of formulas. Uh, or in algebraic terms from ultra filters of the Lindenbaum uh, Tarski algebra of K plus. And uh, this fact that K plus is not valid in its canonical cryptic frame uh, is not a surprise since this is a simple fixed point logic. Uh, that means that if we consider its class of uh, algebras, uh, then any element of the form box plus A appears to be turns out to be the greatest fixed point of this mapping. Z is mapped to box A in junction box Z, and we see that box plus A equals uh, the greatest fixed point of this mapping. Uh, so K plus is uncanonical model logic. That is, it's not well than scripty canonical cryptic frame. Though 
we have a rich and general theory of canonical model logics, we know much less about the case of uncanonical ones. However, the family of uncanonical logics includes such interesting logics as GL, GLP, K+, and other uh, interesting logics such as the model logic, uh, the mu calculus, the propositional dynamic logic, etc. And in this talk, I would like to discuss uh, a pattern uh, which holds for all of these three logics, GL, GLP, and K+, which I noticed when uh, investigated certain infinitary derivations uh, for GL, GLP, and K+, respectively. And this pattern is as follows. For each of these three logics, it's uh, corresponding class of algebras is not closed under completions. However, this subclass of completable algebras can be uh, identified and described using certain uh, infinitary derivations in this logics. That is, in terms of algebraic logic, this subclass of completable algebras corresponds to an extension of L, where L is GL, GLP, or K plus, with infinite derivations. In each of these three cases, uh, L, the logic, is closed, the set of theorems of the logic is closed under infinite probability. And that means that the lindenbaum tarski algebra is completable. Moreover, for any completable algebra of the corresponding class of algebras, we have a stone type representation theorem. That is, uh, each completable algebra is embeddable into A power set L algebra. And finally, since the Lindenbaum Tarski algebra is completable, its representation gives us a structure uh, which is certainly not a canonical Kripke frame, but from a point of view of a generalization of Kripke semantics, from a point of view of neighborhood semantics, gives us a canonical neighborhood frame for the corresponding logic L. Uh, so we hear this pattern. Uh, and it's also interesting that here we have a particular way of completion of completable algebras of each of corresponding varieties, and in particular for the case of the model logic K plus, since we know very little about completions of fixed point logics. And now I would like to show you this pattern, but not in the case of the pure model logic K plus, but for its extension, namely the model logic of common knowledge. Since in this case, uh, neighborhood semantics turns into a well-known topological one. And uh, I hope that all exposition uh, will become more clear. Okay, I will consider the model logic as for CI. That is, let us fix a finite non-empty set I whose elements can be interpreted as agents and consider language with the model connectives box I for each agent I and an additional model connective C. Uh, where any expression box I phi uh, can be interpreted in this language as the agent I knows that phi is true. Uh, for, so for each agent, we add 
model connective box I and write out axioms of the standard model logic S4. Uh, and for the model connective of common of C, which can be interpreted as the modality of common knowledge, C of phi means that phi is common knowledge of our set of agents. And here we see final three axioms, which looks precisely as axioms of the model logic K plus of transitive closure, where instead of box plus, we write here C, and instead of box, we write E, where E is an abbreviation for conjunction of uh, box I psi for each agent I, and it can be read as E phi that uh, each agent, every agent knows that psi is true. So we write these three axioms connecting uh, this I, this E uh, operation and the C connective, uh, meaning that uh, the common knowledge can be considered as, its, as the transitive closure of this every agent knows. Operation. And the same inference rules as in the model logic of credit closure, modus pons, and the necessitation rule for the common knowledge connective C. Now let me show you these uh, infinitary derivations which lead to the description of completable algebras of this logic. Dynamic derivation is a well founded tree constructed of formulas, constructed according to the rules, modus ponens, necessitation, and this additional inference rule. Uh, phi naught implies that every agent knows psi and every agent knows phi one. Phi one implies a similar statement for phi two, etc. And if we have this set, the sequence of premises, we can conclude that phi naught implies that psi is common knowledge of our agents. As usual, an assumption leaf uh, in any Amiga derivation is a leaf that is not marked by an axiom of our uh, logic of common knowledge. Uh, the derivability relation defined by this uh, Amiga derivation, uh, I denote like turnstile Omega. And here we see a proposition which tells us that the set of theorems of this uh, model logic of common knowledge is closed under Omega probabilities. That is, if phi is provable by means of an Omega derivation without assumption leaves, without assumptions, that this formula phi can be obtained, can be proved by an ordinary finite proof in this logic. And uh, in my view, this definition of this derivability relation on turnstile Amiga suggests, suggests the following interpretation. Uh, phi is common knowledge whenever all statements from sigma are common knowledge of our set of agents. So now we have defined uh, our system of common knowledge uh, as for CI, where the common knowledge uh, model connective is considered as, a as the transitive closure of the operation. Every agent knows that psi is true. And we see the uh, infinitary derivations, which will give us a description of completable algebras of this uh, logic. Now let us move on and consider its algebraic semantics. First of all, let me recall uh, algebraic semantics of a standard model logic S4, the logic which describes uh, properties of the one uh, model connectives A agent knows that. 
An anterior algebra is a Boolean algebra expanded with an additional unary operation box, which satisfies the following identities, uh, equations in one an equation. And due to Kuratowski, we know that there is a close connection between topological spaces and these anterior algebras. Uh, that is, if we have a topological space, then uh, the power set Boolean algebra of the space expanded with the interior operation is an interior algebra. And uh, we have a converse uh, direction that if for a set X, its power set Boolean algebra expanded with a mapping uh, is an interior algebra, then the set X bears a unique topology to uh, such that this box operation equals the interior operation with respect to this to topology. So power set interior algebras are essentially ordinary topological spaces. And now in a straightforward way, which is uh, let us uh, write out definition of the algebras corresponding to this logic uh, of common knowledge. We have, we have a Boolean algebra expanded with corresponding unary operations, uh, box I for each agent I and an operation C for the common knowledge. Uh, each of these operations gives us an interior algebra and uh, the two final conditions are precisely conditions that tell us that C is a, the transitive closure of E they looks precisely as this axiom of the uh, model logic of transitive closure. I mean, these two, these two conditions. CA uh, is less or equal than EA conjunction ECA and this, uh, and this condition, this one. Now I'm going to define the class of so-called standard as for CA algebra. So let me uh, simply call this algebras uh, common knowledge algebras and uh, standard common knowledge algebras. Uh, okay, uh, standard common knowledge algebras are defined in the following way. First, uh, let me recall how this Amiga rule looks like. Uh, look, uh, yes, uh, what, what is the form? What the form is of this Amiga rule? We have infinitely many premises and, and one conclusion. And now let us uh, rewrite this Amiga rule as a condition on common knowledge algebras. Uh, if we have a common knowledge algebra, then we call this algebra standard. If for any element D and any sequence of elements such that, so we have a sequence of inequalities corresponding to premises of this Amiga rule. If we have such uh, a sequence of inequalities, we have an inequality which corresponds to the conclusion of this Amiga rule. So we call such uh, common knowledge algebras standard and uh, it will be proved that uh, this algebra, the, uh, that completable common knowledge algebras precisely are standard uh, common knowledge algebras. Uh, one example of a standard algebra we already know, uh, since this logic is closed under infinitary provability, it's Lindenbaum-Tarski algebra is standard. Uh, 
Uh, but there are also another series of examples. I mean, uh, let me briefly recall that an algebra is complete or sigma complete. Yes, is sigma complete if any it's countable subset has the least ample bound. Now it turns out that any, not only complete, but already sigma complete common knowledge algebra is standard. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. And finally, let us uh, notice a connection between infinite derivations and a global semantic consequence relation of a standard uh, common knowledge algebras. Uh, in a standard way, let us consider evaluation in our algebra, which is a function that, ma that maps formulas uh, of our logic into this algebra, preserving uh, all propositional constants and connectives. And we said that uh, formula phi is a global semantic consequent of a set of formula sigma if over this class of standard common knowledge algebras, if for any such algebra and any evaluation, V in this algebra, the value of phi is equal to top whenever values of all formulas from sigma uh, are equal to top. And straightforwardly by means of uh, uh, universal algebra or algebraic logic, we see that this two, that the previously defined durability relation via by unique derivations and this global syntactic consequence relation of a standard common knowledge algebras, these relations uh, coincide. Now let us move on to topological semantics of this algebra, of this logic. Uh, we know that, we remember that S4 is closely connected with topological spaces. And in the case of this logic of common knowledge, uh, there is a connection between multi-topological spaces and power set uh, algebras of this logic. That is, uh, if the power set Boolean algebra uh, of a set X expanded with corresponding uh, operations, box I for each agent I and expanded with C operation. If this algebra forms a common knowledge algebra, then there exists a unique family of topologies to I. Uh, so for each agent I, we have a mem, we have a topology to I on X, such that as in the case of uh, previous connection due to Kuratowski between topological spaces and interior algebras, box I is just uh, the interior operator of the topology to I. And in addition, we see that this common knowledge uh, operation C equals the interior operation in TOR, where this topology TOR is just the intersection of all these topologies uh, corresponding to our agents. And uh, there is the converse. Uh, relation uh, that is if on a set we have a family of topologies where for each agent uh, there is a topology to i then the power set boolean algebra expanded with the corresponding interior operators uh, yeah and the additional interior operator with respect with uh, with respect to this topology which is the intersection of all topologies of all the members of this family of topologies gives us uh, a common knowledge algebra. 
So in topological terms, the topology uh, for the common knowledge uh, operator is just the intersection of topologies uh, for uh, for all for all our agents. Okay. Now in this simple case of topology, in this case of topological semantics, we can uh, similarly consider global consequence relations of our topological models. So if we have an I topological space, then it's I meaning that we have a family of topologies to I for each agent I. Uh, it's power set Boolean, it's power set algebra can be considered as the common knowledge algebra. And we can define this global, uh, uh, first of all, evaluation over uh, a topological model which is just evaluation in the power set algebra, common knowledge algebra of uh, I topological space. And we will write uh, that phi is true at in our topological model if the value of phi equals the whole set X. Uh, and we can see, we can consider respectively this global consequence relation over the set of topological models of our logic. That is phi is a global consequent of sigma. If for any, if for any model phi is true at this model whenever all formulas from sigma are true. And from the previous uh, algebraic completion, uh, uh, algebraic completeness result, we see that if phi is a global consequence over the class of standard uh, common knowledge algebras, then phi is a consequent over topological spaces. Since any power set algebra is complete since it's sigma complete since it's standard. So uh, topological I topologies or uh, power set uh, common knowledge algebras correspond to give us a subclass of all standard common knowledge algebras. Uh, and the converse direction can be obtained by the uh, following representation theorem. Uh, representation theorem, first of all, let me recall you uh, uh, representation theorem due to McKinsey and Tarski for interior algebras. Uh, if we have an interior algebra, then we consider the set of ultra filters of this algebra uh, and uh, a standard stone embedding of uh, Boolean algebra into the power set of this ultra filter space. And McKinsey and Tarski proved the following representation theorem for interior algebras given an interior algebra, if we can, there really exists a topology tor on the ultra filter space such that uh, such that precisely uh, for any element A of our algebras, the set of ultra filters containing box A equals the result of application of the anterior operation to the set of ultra filters uh, containing an element A. That is, uh, the restriction of this interior operation uh, of this topology to this sub-algebra A precisely uh, corresponds to this box model connective interior box model connective box model operation on an interior algebra. So as uh, this uh, theorem tells us that any interior algebra can be embedded into atomic complete interior algebra. And this is very 
here we see a very simple uh, here we have a very simple proof idea that this topology tool can be that is can can be generated by uh, these sets. We can consider subsets of this ultrafilter space, uh, subsets of those ultrafilters which contain uh, elements box A for of the form box A for all A from our interior algebra. And uh, it turns out that for the case of our logic of common knowledge, we can prove an analogous result. That is, uh, for any standard common knowledge algebra, there exists a, a family of topologies on the power set, on the ultra filter set of our algebra, uh, such that uh, such that the restriction the restriction of the interior operator on uh, elements corresponding uh, on the image and the stone embedding to this algebra A, we obtain precisely this model operation box I. So this uh, condition is precisely as in the McKinsey-Tarski representation theorem. But moreover, uh, for any uh, this, for any A, CA where C is this common knowledge operation uh, equals to the result of a plot application of this interior operator to the corresponding set of ultra filters where the store topology is as before is the intersection of this topology store I. So this theorem uh, tells us that any standard uh, common knowledge algebra can be embedded in the, in the common knowledge algebra that they, which is atomic and complete. Um, and uh, as consequences of this result, we immediately obtain the following uh, uh, the, uh, the following set of uh, equivalent uh, statements. We see that for a common knowledge algebra, if it is standard, it's equivalent that it's embeddable into the power set uh, common knowledge algebra of an I topological space, then Trivially, it's embeddable in the, com in the complete common knowledge algebra, but we already know that all complete common knowledge algebras are standard. Their subalgebras are standard. Then, if an algebra is embeddable in the complete one, then it is standard. So, all these statements are equivalent. Uh, and I consider that it's interesting because for fixed point uh, Boolean algebras, uh, we know something about McNeil completion for the, we know uh, that due to Santa Canale that McNeil completion of the lindenbaum tarski algebra of the model, of the model new calculus uh, preserves uh, some fixed points. Uh, and and we almost know nothing uh, which is uh, somehow uh, which we almost know nothing above this result. Uh, nothing which somehow tell us more about completions uh, of fixed point algebras. But in this case of simple fixed points, uh, namely fixed points which describe transitive closure, we can 
describe and give uh, precise uh, construction to uh, obtain completions, but in the case of standard common knowledge algebras. Okay, and there's another consequence. Uh, we see that uh, this uh, omega derivability uh, coincides with global consequence relation over standard common knowledge algebras, and it coincides with the global consequence relation over uh, corresponding multi-topological multi models of our common knowledge logic. Uh, uh, so we see that this theorem is, in my view, supports this interpretation of this amiga derivative relation as uh, phi is common knowledge whenever all formulas from sigma common knowledge due to that uh, topological or multi-topological spaces have uh, some have epistemic interpretations which are quite often in the area of epistemic logic. Okay, and now let me give just an idea, just a hint, how this uh, representation theorem for common knowledge algebras can be obtained. Uh, first of all, for each uh, for each agent i, uh, surely. We can consider the same topology as in the proof of the McKinsey-Tarski representation theorem. I mean, this uh, the topology for each agent generated by this set of subsets of the ultra, spa uh, ultra filter space of our algebra, and consider the intersection of these topologies. Uh, as in the proof of McKinsey-Tarski theorem, we know these equalities for each agent i, but it remains to show that uh, now the interior operator responding to the intersection of topologies uh, restricted to the image of this algebra A under stone embedding precisely gives us this operation C, common knowledge operation on our algebra. The left to right inclusion holds for any uh, common knowledge algebra. However, this equality, the converse inclusion requires the standardness. Uh, and the key property of standard algebras is as follows. Let me uh, once more recall you the form of this amiga rule. And now, uh, for any common knowledge algebra, we can consider this, uh, this binary relation on it. Uh, so we, uh, we can get uh, a premise, a one premise of our meager rule. It's written this, the corresponding inequality is written here and put uh, a is less than equal is less than B with respect to D if such an inequality holds. So if we have an infinite uh, sequence of premises of an Amiga rule, the sequence corresponds to a decreasing sequence of elements with respect to this order where phi corresponds to this element D. And the uh, key property of standard algebras uh, looks like this. An algebra is standard if and only if for any element D, this binary relation is well-founded on this set, on this subset of elements. 
uh, in other terms, uh, this subset is a so-called accessible part of this binary relation. Yes? Is there, is there a question? Okay. Uh, why is this? Uh, why this proposition is important? Using it, we can define with respect to D ordinal heights of elements of our algebra and uh, different ordinal meshes. Uh, of notions which are connected with our algebra. And the converse, the right to left inclusion in this equality uh, is obtained by a transfinite induction argument using uh, ordinal heights, using ordinal heights obtained from this uh, well-founded binary relation. Uh, now, I think that uh, uh, I, I, shall, I, I would like to skip more details of the theorem. Let us sum up. Uh, uh, we uh, proved that an algebra of common knowledge algebra is completable if and only if it is standard. Standard algebras correspond to the common knowledge uh, logic extended with omega derivations. Uh, and uh, due to the fact that the Lindenbaum Tusky algebra is standard, this representation theorem gives us a structure. Uh, which is a can, is a, can be called a, a canonical topological frame for the model logic of common knowledge. And in the case of uh, uh, the model logic S4, uh, such a structure was called topocanonical frame, uh, topocanonical frame. Uh, okay, uh, that's that's all. Thank you, dear colleagues, for your attention. Thanks, our speaker. So, questions, remarks? Can I, uh, I have a simple question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. That wasn't the question. Um, the the uh, you started off with K plus, and then you moved to common knowledge. Uh, but um, K plus is more like common belief, and common knowledge is more like K star. Was there any sig significance to that shift? Uh, no, all uh, this representation same and all this pattern holds for K plus, but the shift was made. I decided to make this shift since uh, the model logic of uh, common knowledge presents this uh, uh, well, uh, uh, with this common topological semantics. Uh, and in this case of K plus, uh, maybe I shall to explain how neighborhood frames for this common belief uh, model connectives look like. Mm. Okay, okay, thank you. Other questions? Oh. I think I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, a bit longer, so I want to, 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 to see the whole thing in, in, in general perspective. So the, the, the notion of common knowledge was introduced by Lewis uh, back in uh, uh, the first publication was 1969. And uh, it was introduced as a, um, as a philosopher, of course. Introduced as an epistemologist, yes. As a situation uh, which yields uh, the, the, the knowledge of fact F with any prefix of knowledge modalities, any finite prefix or not. K 
knows that K2 knows that K1 knows that K2 knows. That K2 knows, that K2 knows that so this is called the prefix definition. Later, uh, several years later, it was reintroduced by Bob Oman in uh, uh, game theoretic environment. Bob Oman, whom I know well, uh, he is a trained mathematician. He is a graduate of the City College of, uh, of, the, city, uh, of the City University of New York. And uh, at some moment, uh, he, nice, he gave a very nice mathematical definition of it, but in some moment, instead of putting inequality, he puts equality among the sets. So the certain closure is equal to what he wants to define. And as a result, uh, the Lewis definition shrank to, uh, to the fixed point, certain fixed point, which is one of many, which actually yield the Lewis, the prefix common knowledge condition. Uh, the most vividly, this can be, uh, this can be demonstrated by uh, the fact that universal knowledge, which is, as we all know, not the, formally it's not the common knowledge as a transitive closure definition, uh, also yields this prefix common knowledge. And this is the desired condition from Lewis would be met, but it's drop off the formal definition. But at a certain moment, instead of putting implication in, in somewhere inside the definition or inequality, which would be fair to the prefix definition of common knowledge, the mathematicians and then followed by logicians, they opted for a more round, uh, more mathematically nice definition and a simple definition with equality or biconditional at certain moment. And the difference of course is obvious uh, when, if the frame is connected, then they coincide. Apparently universal knowledge, common knowledge is the same thing because it's just one and only way to, to transitively, to, to, close, to close this transitively. However, in, uh, in the modern setting, in the belief revision setting, uh, the, uh, the game theories and the epistemology, they seriously consider independently of this, all these uh, foundational issues, they consider situation when the, uh, the space, the corresponding Kripke model which describes the whole, the, the, the whole space, is not, it consists of uh, clusters not connected between them. It's one cluster which you can reach uh, with the reachability thing. Another cluster, but they're not connected. Otherwise it would coincide. And uh, the whole uh, suggestion of the belief revision is that there is a selector, the belief revision, uh, the agent or whatever, the group of agents, they jump from one cluster to another. And then what happens? If you say, if you assume common knowledge, then you means that you assume that F holds in a certain cluster because this, this corresponds to the common knowledge. There's a certain cluster around the so-called real state, okay? And then at certain moment you jump over to another cluster, which the usual assumption of common knowledge is not covering. And by doing this, you can really falsify some fundamental theorems and gain theory, for example, the, the so-called Omen theorem of rationality, which says that backward induction solution is the only solution uh, the only solution uh, in the perfect information games. So it means that it's not just a game of mind to see the difference, but uh, in, uh, uh, there is actually the, uh, the multiplicity of common knowledge uh, in the prefix sense. There are plenty of m situations. One of them is common knowledge in the traditional sense. Another one is another extreme is universal knowledge they all yield the prefix condition, which was actually, uh, which is what uh, the users naively assume that it's one and only common knowledge, that everybody works, everybody in the user thing, they, they well, everybody quote unquote. In game theory, unless they're really just baptized logicians, model logicians, they think about common knowledge as a prefix common knowledge. So the question now, the question is uh, whether, how flexible is your frame? Can your algebraic models sense the multiplicity of common knowledge? So in the fixed point thing, it's pretty clear because the, 
the, the usual omen, common knowledge in omen sense, when the equality is there, is the least fixed point. But there is a, the, there is a largest fixed point, the plenty in between, depending on the frame. Whether the algebraic models sense this, or we have to add another dimension to it in order to, to cover the whole story. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry for a long question, but I, I hope it's <laughs> Yes. Uh, let me uh, try to somehow uh, first sum up maybe some parts of your um, question. Uh, as I understand, there is uh, two, so to say, ordinary notions of common knowledge, this iteration notion of common knowledge, this uh, 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 one, uh, all agents, every agent knows that every agent knows, et cetera, finally many times. Yep. Uh, it is uh, the so-called minimal, min, uh, I, yep. don't, I don't know how the minimal notion of common knowledge. Well, it depends on how you look at it, yes. Yes, it depends. And the fixed point notion of common knowledge. And you notice that uh, there is the third option of universal knowledge, which is a fixed point, but maybe not the greatest fixed point, but some fixed point. Um, uh, and there are plenty in between, actually. So that's the, the, the that's the story. I invite, since we are mathematicians, at least in this in this environment, I invite us as mathematicians, as logicians, to really study this situation mathematically, because it's not just two or three examples, and uh, uh, there are it's the multiplicity of common knowledge in this sense, and they all answer the original question and. Uh, it, uh, I gave you an example of a situation where this difference becomes important. Uh, and so this, this is a real challenge for this. Yes. So, uh, um, and again, Daniel, I'm not expecting I there are some, yes. I'm not expecting an immediate answer. I just want your be beautiful mind to think about it. Yes, maybe there are some subtleties, subtleties in this representation procedures, which are, yes. uh, give us uh, topologies from uh, algebras, which somehow uh, can reflect this. Uh, Absolutely. The I, I'm sure there is, there is a lot of room to, to, to notice it or to improve it if it's not there. Thank you for uh, comment. So, other questions? If not, then let's thank our speaker again. And we will have five, we will have, have five minutes break till the next talk. Thank you. Это уже...